it's time for Orchard Skills. When creating an Orchard Core CMS module, it's always beneficial to have a mechanism to customize a module by using settings. Settings enable a user to configure the appearance, actions, or hardware of an application. If a user's settings are not modified, the default configuration is used. In a previous video, we created an Orchard Core CMS module for our Raspberry Pi IoT Relay. Today on Orchard Skills, we'll be adding custom settings for that module. Please stay with us and we'll get started. Welcome back. In order to add custom settings for the Raspberry Pi IoT Relay module, you'll need to clone the GitHub repository. With your favorite browser, head over to github.com slash orchard skills slash orchard skills dot orchard core dot raspberry pi CMS module. Once there, click on the green code button and click on open with GitHub desktop, then open github desktop dot exe and then hit the clone button. Okay, great. Let's launch Visual Studio. In order to add settings to the CMS module, we're going to need some files. And these files depend on different features inside of your CMS module. So the first feature we'll work on is the relay feature. So let's create a directory and name it relay. So let's click on the Orchard Skills, Orchard Core dot Raspberry Pi project, right click, add new folder, and let's call this relay. Okay, inside this relay file, we'll need four additional directories. And let's create those now. Go to add, new folder, and we'll need a drivers. Right click, add new folder. We'll need a recipes. Click on the relay again. Right click, add, new folder. We'll need a settings. Go back and click on the relay folder. Right click, add, new folder. And we'll also need a view models. Okay, great. So in the drivers directory, we'll right click, add new item, and let's do a class, and let's call this Raspberry Pi Relay Settings Display Driver .cs. Add that. In the recipes, click on recipes, right click, add new item class, and we'll call this Raspberry Pi Relay Settings Step .cs. Okay, in our settings, click on that folder, right click, and add new item. And we'll call this file Raspberry Pi Relay Settings.cs. And then click on View Modules and right click and add new item. And let's call this file Raspberry Pi Relay Settings View Model.cs. Okay, great. After that, let's click on the project file and then do a right click and add new item. And we'll call this file admin menu.cs. And click on the project file again, right click, add new item, and let's call this one permissions.cs. Then again, click on the project file, right click, add new item, and we'll call this raspberry pi constants.cs. Now let's go back to our views folder here, right click, add, and let's click on razor view empty. And here we'll call this inavigation text raspberry pi relay dot and hit add and then click on the views folder again right click add new item and this file we want to name raspberry pi relay settings dot edit dot cs html and add that and i believe that's all the files we need okay great okay let's start with the settings file so let's let's click on raspberry pi relay settings and let's modify this. And here we want to create a setting for the GPIO pin. And this will be a property. So we have a getter and setter. And then we'll initially set it to pin 17. And the Raspberry Pi relay settings will be derived from section display driver with iSight and then the Raspberry Pi settings. Okay, great. Now let's go down to the Raspberry Pi relay settings view model. Here we want to create a property called GPIO pin. Now let's go to the Raspberry Pi Relay Settings Display Driver. Click on that. Now here, we want to declare a Raspberry Pi Relay Settings Display Driver based off of the Section Display 
driver, eyesight, and Raspberry Pi relay settings. Then we'll also need a iAuthorization service, iHttp contact assessor, and we'll do a dependency injection with both of those and assign that to our local variables. And then we'll create a method called edit async where we'll get the user, then we'll do an initialization. And we'll also need a method called update async, where we get the user, go through the authorization, and then we'll update the model async, and then return edit async. Okay, great. Let's go to Raspberry Pi Relay Setting Step. And here we want to create a class called Raspberry Pi Relay Setting Step based off of iRecipe Step Handler. What this is used for is when there's some configuration in the recipe, it will load our settings from the recipe file. We have our site service, which we need to dependency inject. Then we have a task called execute async. And basically that will update our site settings. Okay, great. So now let's go to the admin menu here. Here, what we need to do is set up the menu system inside the dashboard. And that's what we're gonna do here. So do we clear our feature, which is gonna be the Raspberry Pi Relay. Then we declare class Raspberry Pi Relay Admin Menu based off of iNavigator Profiler. Get the shell descriptor here. And then we'll also need a build navigation async. And this is basically where we define what our menu structure will be. So it'll be under configuration, under settings, Raspberry Pi. So that's how you define your menu. So now let's go to our permissions here. And here we'll define our permissions for Raspberry Pi Relay settings, where they have admin settings, where they can manage that. And so here we're saying you need administrator privileges to change that. And let's go to our constants file. In here we're just setting up some constants for the constant string Raspberry Pi Relay. It's basically our namespace, which is orchardskills.orchardcore.raspberrypi.relay. So let's head on back up here to our project file here. So here we'll also need admin.abstractions and we'll also need orchardcore.navigation.core. Okay, save that. These are the additional NuGet packages that we'll need. So let's go down to the startup here. So we'll go to the startup.cs. So here we'll need to add scoped on our iPermission provider. We need to add recipe execution step, add scope on iDisplay driver, add scoped on iNavigation provider. And we'll also need some usings for that. So now our last step is in the relay device. And so we don't want this to be a constant anymore. So let's delete that. But we can do, we'll add it as just a private integer and we'll call it GPIO pin and we'll set that to 17 by default. In order for us to get the, the settings for the relay device, we need to declare a private read-only iSite service underscore site service. And of course, we'll need some usings for that. We'll add that here. And now we want to rename this pin here and rename this here, and rename this here. Okay, great. So we'll also need to do dependency injection on the site service. So let's add that. It goes in the constructor here, and we'll go ahead and assign that to our local site service. And then we'll retrieve our Raspberry Pi relay settings by doing a site service dot get site settings async and do a dot get a waiter dot get results and then cast that a dot as as Raspberry Pi relay settings. And once we've done that, we can actually set relay GPIO pin to the Raspberry Pi relay settings for the GPIO pin. And now for our views, if we go to navigation item text dash Raspberry Pi relay dot ID dot CS HTML, this is where we set up our icon. So we're using the Raspberry Pi icon here. And then if we go to our Raspberry Pi relay settings dot edit dot CS HTML, this is where we're editing our pin number here. And then finally, if we go to our index dot CSHTML, we are adding the GPIO pin number here and we're displaying that on the page. Okay, great. So now let's go ahead and run the application. Go up here and hit the green triangle button. Okay, let's go ahead and put our site name in. A recipe will be a recipe defaults to Raspberry Pi theme. Let's enter our username, email address, enter our password and our password confirmation, and then hit the finish setup button. Okay, great. Let's go ahead and log in and enter our credentials. And let's go to the dashboard and let's go into configuration and go into features and let's search for Raspberry Pi. Here it is. Let's enable the module. And now if we go to settings, you'll notice here that we have a Raspberry Pi. If we click on that, 
and we have the Raspberry Pi settings defaulting to GPIO pin 17. If we want, we can change that. So we go to 22, save that, and let's exit the application. So we'll actually stop the application and let's rerun the application. And if we go to slash relay now, we notice that our relay now is set to pin 22. Isn't that awesome? We turn on, turn off, turn on, turn off. To recap, we cloned the Raspberry Pi IoT Relay Module GitHub repository. We added the necessary folder and files to create the Orchard Core settings for ACMS module. We built and ran the application. We went into settings and added Raspberry Pi Relay feature. Once the feature was added, we were able to see the Raspberry Pi Relay settings page. We set the GPIO pin to 22 and saved the setting. We exited the application re-ran the application, went to the slash relay page, and seen that the GPIO pin was set to 22. Now, if you missed or didn't understand something, that's okay. There's a detailed blog post that describes all the steps. There is also a GitHub repository with the complete source code. All this information is in the video description. If you like this video, please click on the thumbs up icon. Also, please subscribe and click on the bell icon to get a notification when I release the next video. Thank you for watching.